If you care about clean air, water, and food, and you want to see social justice for everyone, this podcast is for you. Green Divas Maxine Margot and Megan McWilliams and Green Dude Wayne Bouchard are going to dig in and try to make sense of the current political scene, especially as it relates to climate change, pollution, and human rights. We are not political pundits. We are deeply concerned citizens alarmed by the state of our government. We will try to offer rational commentary and solutions, amplifying positive news as often as possible. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the show. All right. Hey, welcome to another episode of GDP, which stands for Gross Domestic Politics. <laughs> but it's really, it's it's Green Divas Politics. But I call, Or Green Dudes Politics. Or Green Dudes Politics. But um, it's a.k.a. Gross Domestic Politics. Politics. I like that. That's because we're all gross. <laughs> because politics is gross. It's like a dude thing. You know, it's gross. It's just, it's just gross, man. Politics needs to take a shower. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it really does, actually. Something like that. It, it needs brainwashing. Yeah. So, wow. We, we haven't talked to y'all since before the midterm elections. A lot has happened. And... Um, Let's just introduce ourselves. I'm Green Diva Meg, and my unpundits with me here today are the unpundits. Uh, I'm Green Diva Max, and I'm the unpundit Wayne. <laughs> Green Dude Green Wayne. Dude Wayne. Green I Dude. hate that. Why? Yeah. Okay. Uh. Then you're now Green Diva Wayne. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You're I don't Green like Diva that. Wayne. You just worse. became. You just that's became worse. A, you just became a diva again. How but can you not be okay being a green dude? Yeah. Green is good, baby. I'm highly offended. I don't yeah. like being a dude. You don't like being a dude? I don't How like about being called a dude. Green guy? Dude. Green Come guy? On, dude. <laughs> no, okay. he's got to be a green dude. Uh, green uh, man? That's, that's, not, that's not cool. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's he's, go. He's Wayne. He's Wayne. Anyway, so like what just happened? Max, you're going to give us a rundown good of thing, what we just went Well, with? you know... Uh, with much trepidation before the midterms, uh, we can, I think, breathe a little better because we were very concerned about the checks and balances uh, or the lack thereof. And uh, after the midterm elections, um, we do have a check in place because the House results, um, 2018 midterm elections, uh, the Democrats are at 233. They got 38 seats. That's and a they lot. took over the House. The Republicans are at 201. They're minus 38, uh, which, okay. Um, now there's a check in place. There's, there's a check in place. Uh, didn't get that in the Senate, although there's still an outstanding race, I think, in Mississippi, uh, which is very contentious. Uh, but the, the Democrats um, are at 47 with an asterisk, and so it's minus two for them, and Republicans have 52, which is a plus plus two. But uh, the House controls a lot. You know, while the Senate has certain powers, the House controls a lot. Uh, and then there were governorships and state, you know, le legislative le state offices that were, uh, you know, done. But we won't talk about the state ones other than the governors. The results were the Democrats, uh, they have 23 governorships. That's plus seven. Uh, the Republicans have 27, but a minus six. So we flipped some things around, which is a good thing. I mean, I think. <laughs> so maybe we're starting to feel our oats. So according to a Pew Research Center uh, um, article, these are some of the principal findings. Uh, most of the findings in this report are based on a nationally representative survey of 1,534 U.S. adults conducted uh, back in May, I don't know. Uh, but now, bringing it to current things, uh, we see that Democrats pulled off the largest midterm election victory in history, according to a breakdown of the popular vote in races and also for, for the House of Representatives. Uh, the party leads the Republicans by more than 8.9 million votes across the U.S. Uh, this is compiled by Cook Political Report, an independent nonpartisan 
Partisan. That's like my. That's my. That's how I talk I in Boston. I thought uh, you said non-partisan. 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 Go, go, Sox. Uh, political. <laughs> and I have a Sox fan here. <laughs> Red Sox. Uh, previously, the margin of victory was eight point seven million, which came in nineteen seventy four midterm elections after the Watergate yeah. scandal and Richard Nixon's resignation. It means the party is on the. Uh, it, Literally on the brink of flipping 40 seats in the House, reaffirming the emerging assessment that this month's midterms amounted to a blue wave. So now we have the House, which is going to be a check. We'll talk more about how that that works a little bit. And and then the question arose, it's been in the news about who would be the Speaker of the House now that Ryan is is gone. And uh, and it comes to uh, whether Nancy Pelosi is going to take up the reins as speaker again. She was speaker before. And, and and there was a little, you know, back and forth going on about that. But, um, Wayne, what say you about this topic? Well, you know, I had um, I had mixed emotions about uh, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, and there was an article in The Atlantic about the, uh, the Nancy Pelosi problem. <laughs> and uh, it is a problem for the Democrats. But uh, you know, I started to look at her record as Speaker of the House, uh, which she was before, and as the um, minority leader in the um, in the House of Representatives. Uh, but when she was Speaker of the House, um, you know, George Bush, George W., came into office after his uh, big victory in his second term, and he was pushing the privatization of uh, Social Security which a lot of people, of course, had concerns about. And then uh, Nancy Pelosi rallied the Democrats, and for the entire congressional year, uh, she held off George W. and the Republican, uh, you know, um, position of privatizing Social Security and putting retirement benefits in the 401Ks. And, of course, then came the great, uh, crash in 207 or 207, 208, 207, yeah. 208 yeah. and you know everybody's uh, retirement funds would have been totally depleted. Uh, and then, of course, she has had some other uh, you know significant victories, and um, you know she uh, supported the uh, the stimulus package that President Obama was behind, and she rallied all of the Democrats, including the. Um, you know, the very conservative blue dog Democrats down south who are, uh, you know, they don't want any kind of deficit spending. And she managed to pass that entire stimulus bill through the House without any Republican votes. And recently, the uh, Brookings Institute called Pelosi the strongest and most effective speaker of modern times. Yeah, it's yes. sort of, it, that, well, that's was, pretty awesome. Actually. I was thinking I, th- I had read somewhere that she has been just so vilified by the Republicans, that even Democrats started to sort of see her that way and not really understanding, like you, you're you noting, how much she actually has done. Yeah. And, and also, um, I, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Okay. Uh, Politico called her the most successful non-presidential political fundraiser in U.S. history. But, you know, in in recent times, of course, the uh, almost all Republican ads tied Democratic candidates to Nancy Pelosi uh, during this midterm election. Right. Like it was such a bad thing. Yeah. Including, you know, uh, the local candidates. That's all they talked about. Yeah. Which led, uh, you know, one Democrat from New York, uh, Kathleen Rice, to say, you know, it's been an attack on our leader. Is it fair? No. Are the attacks accurate? No. But guess what? They, they work. work. Right. The The problem comes with uh, the fact that, uh, you know, why is Nancy Pelosi so unpopular? Because powerful women politicians usually are. Uh, what is that saying? Oh, well-behaved women rarely make history. That one? Yeah, right. <laughs> So, you know, as Nancy Pelosi goes about doing her job, but because she's a woman, you know, they don't like her. And our current uh, commander in chief is particularly uh, not fond of uh, strong, uh, forceful, aggressive women. 
There could be a battle in the House for the speakership. Uh, there is currently a uh, 